So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you are doing extremely well. This is your very own mask for this side, and today we are going to solve a 44th day POTD that is the Kina hit once. Okay, let's see what does the problem say. The problem says that we have been provided with two numbers n and k. These all are these both are ints that is integers. Okay, and what is the output? You have to return the nth number in a series. What is a series? A series which contains all the numbers in which each number has at most k set bits. What is set bits? Suppose if a number is represented in a binary form, the set bits are the bits where the num uh, binary form of is containing one. Okay. Suppose the number is uh, five. So five is represented as one zero one. So you can see there are two ones. There are two set bits. Okay. We have to find all the numbers. With at most k set bits, k suppose k is three, so it can have zero or one or two or three. Okay, not four. Okay, so I guess the input output is clear to you. So let us take an example. Suppose n is five given to you and k is one, so you can have either zero k uh, zero set bits or one set bit. Okay. So what are the numbers that can come? So our first number can be zero if it represents zero. It will be written as zero. Okay, so this is our first number. A second number is one. If we represent one, okay. Third number is two. So two is represented as uh, zero, uh, one zero, right? It also contains one set bit, so two is also a valid one. Fourth, three. It represents it is represented as one one. Two set bits, so not. Our fourth number can be four. So if we go to four, we see it is represented as one zero zero again one set bit. So it is a valid number. And five can be if I say five, it is represented as one zero one. Again no. Six, uh, it is represented as one one zero. Again no. Seven, triple one. Again no. But eight is actually represented as one triple zero. So it is a yes because it contains only one set bit. Okay. So this is the fifth number, and we wanted only the fifth number. So our answer is eight. I hope I hope you are getting my point. Okay. And the approach I showed you in this example solving is the brute force approach. What is the brute force approach? I know most of you have got the hang of it. If you have understood what is the brute force approach, pause pause the video right now and comment down the whole brute brute force approach. Okay. And check afterwards. So brute force approach says we will run a loop, generate numbers one by one, check if number of set bits is less than equals to k. Okay, and when we reach the desired position, when we reach desired position, return answer. So let's go down the brute force approach first and show that it will give you a TLD. Okay, so what will be the code for brute force approach? So our answer is currently num. Store in num. Let us initialize it with zero. Okay. Int cur equals to one. That is the number of uh, values we have taken up till now. So while cur is actually less than n, what do we have to do? Increment your num. All right. Now if I will be using a built-in function to find the number of set bits, that is written as built-in pop count. It will return me the number of uh, set bits in my integer num. If it is less than or equals to k, in that case, uh, my position will increment. That is, I have found another number in the series. Okay. After this, the loop will end, and I will return my num as my answer. So let's run, compile and run on it. So as you can see, oh, I have. Return it wrong. It is built in. Sorry for my spelling mistake. 
yeah so it is it is very fine for combined run but you can submit it will give me a tle i will show it to you so you can see it is giving me a tle on 37 test case that means we have to implement a uh, efficient approach by the way what is the time complexity for the brute force approach so time complexity is in the worst case it will go up till n and the built in function use o of m what is m here the size of the uh, string of the what do we say binary presentation so i am taking both of them n times so it will be n into m okay we have to reduce the time complexity so reducing the time complexity let us move to the optimized approach optimize so what is the optimized approach okay now our main idea is to perform a binary search okay binary search on the range of possible numbers plus use dp uh, and guys it is actually a very hard problem because as you can see it is using uh, two of the most toughest algorithms but we will try to simplify it down so it is using binary search and using dp to efficiently count the numbers to efficiently count the numbers at most k set bits in the binary representation the binary search narrows down the range okay the binary search will narrow down the range you know that if my low is here my high is here my mid will be something here and according to that my high will either come here or my low will come here so i'm reducing my size uh, by 2 that is why the binary search uh, time complexity is also logarithmic right okay so how will my implementation work for that let me change the ink yeah i will initialize my low with 0 my high with int max right then i will use a dp array of three dimensions okay and uh, after that i will run a while loop which will work until my low is actually less than equals to high in that my i will calculate my mid and i will find a uh, i will and i will and i will call a function find and i will pass my mid and my k to it all right now what does find do find will convert the number mid into binary and call a d call a uh, dynamic programming function to calculate and count the numbers with at most k bits okay what is the dp function doing so the dp function is actually taking the binary representation which is which we are passing from the find function okay and it will be taking its length and a flag type okay type what is type representing type is representing whether the number is containing leading zeros or not leading zeros or not okay after that the dp function will use uh, memorization as it is the work of dp and it will calculate the upper bound okay upper bound now our upper bound is set based on the current value of the set bit if my number is type otherwise it will be one okay if my number is not type then it will be one okay after that it will initialize answer variable to zero and it will iterate from zero up till upper bound and for each digit for 
ih dedi. Recursively calls dp function to calculate count of numbers with at most k minus digit set bits okay and then finally it updates my dp array for memorization dp finally update dp array if you have lost the meaning of the question don't worry i will code it down for you and it will be it will become very easy for you i know the question today is very hard i know it is very hard it is not only hard it is very hard but try to simplify it down okay so how will it work so first we will make our low as 0 and my high as 1 e 18 as we discussed right after that i will make my uh, dp array here vector of vector of vector of int oh sorry long long int long long int and it will be one two three one two three and it will named as dp okay so now i will have to resize my dp so dp dot resize two and name it will contain a vector of vector of long long int and its size will be 65 why 65 because it has been given in the question that uh, the range is the numbers are following what do we say the numbers are following uh, what do we say it is given why 65 because it has been given that the numbers are following 64 bits policy all right i hope you understand that so it will be vector of vector long long int one time 65 0 all right now while my low is actually greater than high what do i have to do my long long mid will actually be equals to low plus high minus low by 2 it will be only high. right my long long count is equals to find function which i told you in the discussion find function for mid and k and after that my if my count is actually greater than n in that case high will reduce because i have to find the minimum number else my low equals to mid plus one and after the while loop is over return low now we have to implement our find function okay so find function find function is actually returning a long long type so long long find taking a long long mid so long long n and an int k now string s equals to bit set 64 n dot two string for those of you who are wondering what is this line don't worry this is just a line to represent n as a uh, 64 bit number okay in the binary form okay after that i will call a reset what is reset doing reset is actually converting all the numbers in dp to minus one okay and then return the answer returned by dpf what is dpf the dp function we discussed in the notes area so s dot s dot length 1k all right so let us implement our dp function first so long long dpf taking a string by reference we can send the string by reference its length whether it is tight or not tight means uh, it is containing leading zeros or not in k it is sending one here because it is not it is it does not contain leading zeros why it is not containing leading zeros because s is made just like that now my if my k is less than zero that is a possible correct in that case return zero else if 
my n is equal to equal to 0 that is the string is actually not containing any numbers in that case return 1 that is the base case right now if my dp of type of k of n is actually e not equal to minus n in that case return this value only return dp type k n right now my upper bound will be if my tight is actually equals to 1 then my upper bound is equals to s of s dot length minus n minus 0 why 0 if it is 0 it will convert to 0 only if it is 1 it will convert to 1 because uh, uh, upper bound is actually integer else it will be 1 okay let me make some space for you. Yeah. So after that, my long, long answer is actually zero. And for int dig equals to zero, dig is less than equals to my upper bound and dig plus plus. Okay. If my dig is equals to equals to upper bound, in that case answer plus equals to dpf of s n minus 1 type will remain same and k minus digit okay else my answer will be incremented by dpf s n minus 1 type will be increment uh, type will remain 0 here and k minus digit I hope you are understanding what I am discussing with you. Return dp of type k n as an answer. Okay. Okay. Now I just have to implement my reset function that was introduced in the find when I was resetting my whole dp array. For that, what I have to do? For int i equals to 0, i going up till 65, i plus plus, that is a length of the dp array. For int j equals to 0, j is also going up to 65, j plus plus. What I have to do? dp of 0, i, j equals to minus 1, and similarly for dp of 1, i, j, control c, control v, dp of 1, i, j, right? This is my whole code. Hope it will work fine. So it is running fine for compiling. Let's try it. For, like, let's try it out to submit also. In the meantime, please hit the subscribe button. Please, please hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me, and it really motivates me. Today's question was the actual roller coaster ride for me also, and I think uh, I have added some value uh, in your current knowledge. So as you can see, the submit button is also working fine, and we have completed our 40. Three days, three kind of guests, and thank you for watching. And keep watching, stay tuned. Until then, keep coding. We will meet tomorrow with the another POTD. Thank you for watching.